Hello, everyone. Welcome to ESGI's Celebrity Webinar Series. Today's topic is Making SightWords Seriously Fun. I'm Rochelle, and I'm going to be your host for today's webinar, featuring the one and only Mary Amison from Sharing Kindergarten. We'll get started with Mary's presentation in just a moment, but first, we have a few housekeeping details for you. For better audio and video quality, close all other applications and tabs you have open. If you are experiencing any audio or visual, visual issues, try refreshing your browser or even changing your browser. Be sure that your sound is turned up and everyone is muted on this broadcast. You will not be able to ask any questions live to Mary. However, we will be using the chat feature today that is located on the side of your screen. Find that now and type where you're from. Fabulous. It looks like we have people from all over the country logging in today. We're excited to have you. For attending live today, you will receive Mary's 63-page unit, Sight Word Stations. This amazing free unit is a collection of 14 activities which focus on six sight words. Also, you will receive a certificate of attendance. Your certificate will be emailed to you within two days. The email will also contain a link to today's broadcast. For joining us live, we will have five lucky winners. Those five lucky winners will get a one-year subscription to ESGI. We at ESGI are thrilled that so many of you have registered to learn with Mary today. Thanks to all of you who are dedicated to helping children and families. Now, I'm going to turn it over to Mary and let the learning begin. Hi friends, this is Mary from Sharing Kindergarten. And I have to start off by saying I am no celebrity. I am just like everybody else listening. I am a teacher, but most importantly, I'm a learner. I learn from you guys and I learn from my students every single day. I'm so blessed and so grateful that you guys are all listening to me tonight because I know you're taking time out of your day and I know that you have this passion inside to become the best teacher you can be and from the bottom of my heart I really want to thank you guys. It is so meaningful to me when I talk to educators who just want to do better every single day. So seriously, God bless you. I'm so excited. Now let me tell you a little bit about me. This is a cute little picture of my family and FYI, it is completely possible to have children that are genetically nothing like you. So my kids look and act just like their daddy, it's ridiculous. Um, but I am a wife, I've been married for almost 14 years, I'm a mommy of two little girls and I'm a teacher. I teach kindergarten and it is my heart and my soul and my absolute passion. I also am a blogger and I'm from Georgia so in Georgia, it's dark now, <laughs> and it's actually pretty nice weather, so that's nice for us. Um, so do I kind of know what I'm talking about? Um, well, let's hope so. I do have a bachelor's and a master's degree in early childhood education. I also have a specialist degree in instructional technology. So if, if you've ever visited one of my sessions I've done before or been to my blog, you know that I have a little bit of passion for technology. Um, I've been a kindergarten teacher for 11 years. And I've taught 10 of those years in a Title I school. I do not have the nice kids that all have had th this great life. I've had the rough and tough ones, too. Um, if you've read anything about me, you know that I love Disney. Today, at this moment, I have a shirt, and I'll put it on Instagram soon. And it says, my princess name is Teaching Beauty. So it's my new favorite. It's awesome. And I love getting techie. So let's get this party started. First, I want to tell you that I really want this to be as meaningful and as impactful as I could make it. So at the very end, I'm going to give you a link to this handout. And this handout just contains all the short links to everything I'm going to tell you about now. So I want you just to soak up 
all the information I'm giving you. You can absolutely take a screenshot picture um, with your cell phone if you want the link to all these things, but I'm going to give them to you too. So if you're just taking notes and jotting down ideas, I'm going to give you these links. It's going to look just like this. It's going to be cute. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be wonderful. All right, if you want to see some follow-up question answers and know what I think about different things, you can join me at Sharing Kindergarten. That is my blog. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and I will do my best to help you as much as I can. All right, game plan, ladies. Game plan, gentlemen. Today we're going to go over the big picture. What's our big goal with sight words? We're going to talk about flashcards because that's just a lot of what we already do. But I have lots of games, activities, and ideas to share with you, and I know that's what you really want to um, what you want to learn about. So that's our overall goal, and I hope you're as ready as I am. I read over all the questions you guys submitted, and let me say, let's put first things first. First, we have to make sure that our students know that we have to make letters. Sorry, we have to use letters to make words. My students, every year in August, they struggle with the letter B and the word B being different. Same with the letter R and the word R. Same with the letter C and the word C. That just always kind of shakes them up a little bit. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I think I kind of do know that. Then, once they understand this concept, we really want them to be finding sight words. We really want them to be able to see, okay, is that a sight word? Do we know that word? And a lot of that's going to be that visual discrimination. We want them to use basic words and sentences like, I like the cat, I like the dog. Those repetitious sentences are just fantastic for them. And we really want them to kind of just get on the cusp and know about 10 words. So at the end of kindergarten, and I know this varies for everybody, but this was the major question people asked. We want our students to be able to find sight words. We want them to be able to use and expand basic sight words in written sentences. So we don't want them to say, I like the cat. We want them to maybe say, I want to have one brown cat and one black cat. Now that would be a very huge sentence, but again, you can see how they could insert sight words to make them meaningful for them. We want them to be able to read sentences using sight words, and we want them to know about 50. My school system requires a minimum of 100 sight words to go to the next grade. We teach at my school 220 Dolch words. That way the minimum is 100. They've been exposed to 220. And if they learn all 220, we want them to be moved on to the Fry list. So those are the Fry sight word list, and we move them on at their own pace. Now, what do we need to do? And I'm going to use my cursor so I hope you can see it. We're going to find and differentiate tricky sight words, like the word three and there, salt and was. We're going to use multiple sentences using sight words. Our curriculum in Georgia says they have to write three consecutive sentences on a topic. Most of those are going to be very sight word heavy, but if they don't know the sight word, they are allowed to use phonetic based words. And that's no 100. So I hope that answers a lot of your questions. I know everybody has a different amount. Uh, what's developmentally appropriate? Guys, I don't think it really matters what we think. I think we have to teach what we are told to teach, um, and we have to make it as fun and as developmentally appropriate as we can. That's our job. All right, so let's move on. What about flashcards, the big picture flashcards? Um, I love them. And when I left college all those years ago with before the gray hairs and wrinkles started, I thought everybody taught using flashcards. Well, one year I had a student in my class, and it was January, and she knew zero sight words. And I was like, I, this can't be possible. I've taught her these words. She didn't even know I and A. She knew them as letters, but not as words. So I did all my research, me and Google are best friends forever, BFS, and I found these awesome snap word flashcards. So I'm going to use my cursor right over there. And what I found was these were very visually stimulating for my kids, but not in a iPad flash game kind of way, more like a very simple picture way. They also had a motion and a language cue on the back, so my kids could be doing something. They could be saying the same thing to really learn that sentence. 
So I really found out that these cards were a great way for me to really, really get those learners in. <laughs> um, they are made, they're called Snap Words, and they're by Child First Publications, and they're really made for the multi-sensory approach, um, especially for students with ADD, ADHD, and special needs, and I'm always the special ed co-lab teacher, so that just really hit my heart. I feel like if it's a modification we can make for some students, it would probably be great to use it for a lot of students. Now I do have the one-sided flashcard still, and when I first started using snap words, the first thing I worried about was that my students would become dependent on the picture. What I discovered was that was not the case. The picture helps them put that mental picture in their heads. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I apologize. Um, but they did not need that picture support. Here's another look at some of these snapboard cards. You can see this picture right here. The little boy says something about, like, I want it right here. The little card is making it little. The little person is jumping on jump. This one's one of my favorites because the little guy's throwing a fit and he's saying, I want it now. And this little dude right here is saying, I will, I will. My kids identify with these so, so much. So I love them so much, I went out and bought them for my own daughter. So this is my oldest daughter. I call her S publicly. And when she was in pre-K, she was putting those letters together to make words. She was asking me questions and sounding out words. and you know, using bath crayons and those little bath foam things. And so I got her a pack of these. And yes, I took a pocket chart from my classroom. She has a baton, and we're just playing little sight word games. My daughter learned over 100 sight words in one month using these cards. Now, she's a teacher's kid, and she had all the right exposure. But I absolutely know that these sight words work for these little learners. Um, they have apps to go with them, too. So if you have a few learners in your classroom that you really think they would appeal to you, you could definitely try the app out and see if that's helpful to you. And I'm just going to look at her picture a minute longer because I think she's so cute. All right, some ideas for games. We can never have enough games. Games are huge. So one of the games I'm kind of famous for happened completely by accident. Um, my only talent as a teacher is I can make a game out of anything. So my sister-in-law got me this Elvis lunchbox or purse or something. I don't know what it really was. And she was like, make a game out of this. I was like, I can do it. She's like, let's see it. So what I did was I introduced Elvis to my class, and I just said, he's my boyfriend. It's a running joke. And they think he's alive. They don't realize that he's no longer with us. And I put all my student names, you can see them right here, I just took some construction paper or post-its or anything like that, put my kids' names on it and put them in the bag. Then I shake the bag and we dance to Elvis' song, I'm All Shook Up, and we dance maybe 20, 30 seconds. All the kids sit down, all the wiggles are out for a second. I pull one name out of the bag and we make a big fuss and, oh, Kendall gets to read sight words today. And I go through my sight word pile really, really quick using those flashcards. And we count up how many that student knows. I simply write that sight word on my chart, and I give them a little sticker. And the little sticker says, I did a rockin' job reading. I'm playing the Elvis game today. I read blank sight words. My student puts that sticker on. I have data in my chart. They have a sticker that goes home that tells their parents how many sight words they know. In my newsletter, I just put how many sight words we've taught, so they already know that. And here's the kicker. All my former students know exactly what that sticker means, and they all make a big fuss on my current student and how they played the game, because they all love Elvis. So my bigger kids will go, oh my gosh, you got to play the Elvis game? You knew four sight words. That is awesome. Now we know four sight words probably wouldn't be awesome, but that's what we say anyway. So here's the fun part. I put the name in the little pocket that's in the purse or just off to the side, and then I pull another name out. We play just a few times, and it totally depends on the number of sight words in our pile. 
When we get to about 50 sight words, this game is a little harder, so it's definitely better for the beginning of the year. So we play this a few times. Now Kendall's name gets drawn out of the bag again. This student is only playing against themselves. So I say, Kendall, last time you played this game, you got 14 sight words correct. Today we want you to get more. So she is only challenged by what she did before. So if Kendall gets more than 14 sight words, we do like a little Dr. Jean cheer, or I give her a star on the star chart, or you know, like a mini marshmallow, whatever you're allowed to do. Now I have my data growing. I've notified my parents on where their kid is with sight words. I've praised my student. We're all encouraging here. And my kids think it's a really fun game. So I've done a lot of great things with sight words, and I just simply played a little game with it. And they love it. Here's the other beauty. If my kids start to plateau on their sight words, I know pretty quickly. And I know I've got to change something up in my instruction, or I've got to do something different to start reaching them more. Also, it's January, guys, so we know the light bulb is either coming on or it's not. And sometimes now you're getting a kid and you're like twiddling your thumbs and you're like, um, do we have a problem? Do we not? I need some data. And then you know your administration is going to ask for data. They're going to say, we need it in a chart. We need it in a chart. Guess what? You've kept accurate data over several weeks over sight words. So you have that data to support what you need to do. So that's a fun game, the Elvis game. You can play this with Taylor Swift. Um, I'm sure you could find a little bag. Um, so she's been really popular. You can put something in there. You could do this with any Disney song. It really doesn't matter, just as long as it's cute and fun for the kids. I could see kids whipping it any day like nothing using this. Next game. This is a freebie. You're going to get a link to this at the end. And this is just a very fun game. It's called Alligator Chomp. And you can see the little blue arrow is pointing to a mat that a child would have. This mat is for a five-word sight word. There are all the mats included that you need for two, three, four, and five, maybe even six sight words. Then you use the little alligator pieces that the um, red arrow is pointing to. And you write one letter, again, to teach them that letters together make words. So one letter on the little alligator pieces, and you hide them in the room. So this is very similar to a write the room. So your kids take, look at the blue arrow, they take that mat, and they walk around the room, and they write down each letter. Then at the bottom, they write that word again across the bottom to make the word. They love this. So if they get the number two first with the H, they're going to start guessing on what the word is. Here's the beauty of it. If you laminate it, you just erase the lamination clear it off, take a dry erase, write a new word on top, they can play it again and again and again. This is just a really good activity to teach those students that letters make words and build them up. So a lot of you guys said you have to teach um, one sight word a day or five a week or something like that. You could do this every single morning. You could just change out where the alligators are located, change out the letters, and bam, you've got a great game for them. Um, another really fun game is called Kabam, and I know people call this different things. You can call this Boom, um, Wow, I'm sure it, this is not a Mary Amison original. Um, I just took some coffee tins that we have, the little plastic ones. I spray painted them. Um, don't do that because it chips, and then the chipping drives me insane. But you can take those little ones, and you can make them cute if you want to. And then I'm sure every teacher has a plethora of foam squares they use. They're supposed to be math manipulatives. If you don't, head to the dollar store. They have packages of them. And so I took my sight word list and I divided it up just like my county told me to. Um, we have nine weeks in Georgia, so we have a nine weeks, a nine weeks, a nine weeks, and a nine weeks for a year. But however you want to divide your words up, so we have like a first nine weeks list, a second nine weeks list. Do whatever you want. It can be um, pre-primer, primer. It can be fry list one, fry list two, whatever and I put them all color-coded in a bin. So I start lighter to darker just so I can remember what list is which. So all maybe my pre-primer words would be in here, and then maybe all my primer words would be in here, and then maybe all my first grade words would be in here. And as students advance and I see how they're going, I want them to practice on their words. 
So I just take super fancy friends, a piece of colored construction paper, and I write those friends' name on that color. And I literally stick this then underneath this piece of construction paper on my wall. Now I have a very easy differentiated game that's going to specifically target those sight words that I want my kids to know. So my kids are going to play this, and I have a picture to show you why. I just want you to see the setup of this. The most important thing I can tell you is use foam pieces, not anything loud, and color code them. So if my pieces got scrambled, a student could easily unscramble them. And if you use um, anything that's loud, this game, every time they shake that bin, you're going to go insane. So don't do that. All right. So here are my students. They're at a table. And the bin's in the middle with the sight words. They, they shake it just a little bit. They have to reach in with their eyes closed. They pull out their foam sight word piece. They read it. They have to turn it around and show it to everybody else and read it for them. Because you have to get checked, because you know. Kids will make up words. So if everybody says, yes, that's what it is, they get to keep their piece. Then the next person goes, and the next person goes. I'm going to advance it one slide so you can see this piece. Do you see this little star right here? This is what makes it kabam. I'm going to move it back. So if my students reach into that bucket and they pull out one of those star pieces, that student has to put all their pieces back in the bucket. And we all go, kabam, and it's put all the pieces back in. It keeps going around and around and around. Here's the thing. This game never ends. There's never a winner. There's never a loser. This game is simply a great sight word practice. Now, here's what I do love to do. So in my red game, I only put star pieces. In my blue game, I'll put little arrows reversing the direction the game is played. So when you advance to that level, you get an extra little special pieces in there. Then when they advance to the green level, I might put a boys all in or a girls all in. So if you draw that piece out, all the boys would have to put their pieces back in or all the girls would have to put their pieces in. So you can put whatever special card you want to be in there. It just kind of ups the game a little bit and keeps it exciting. This is a very quiet game um, and it's differentiated, so my kids are on their level. If I'm ever very, very worried that maybe this red group isn't really doing what I need them to do and I can't get there to help them, I just call on a friend that might be over here in the green group and send them back to go be the leader of the red group. It never hurts them, and that way maybe I can get done what I need to do. Um, again, this is up close piece of what all the pieces look like. Now, I do start the year with an alphabet version, if that helps you. As we learn blends and digraphs, I go ahead and add those in as well. I put capital on one side, lowercase on the other, in case you're wondering. You can do this however you want. So I teach them the structure of this game in the very beginning of the year with letters and sounds, and then we just move it on to sight words later on. And that is why this one's yellow, because yellow would be the easiest, and then red, blue, green, if I make it more difficult, if that makes sense. Here's another visual of my kids playing the red game. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Um, another really great question we had, and this is just a good question that all teachers have. How do I get my kids to find sight words in what we're reading? But Mary, I have to differentiate too. Guys, I'm with you, with you 100%. So a lot of times, um, we still do letter of the week in Georgia at my county, but in a very healthy way. We don't focus just on that letter, but it's more on the formation of that letter. But So when I do the letter R, I would have two leveled readers. One of them, they would have to color the specific sight word we were looking for. And they would go through and they would say L-I-K-E, like, and then they would color like. They would turn the page, they would find like, and they'd have to say L-I-K-E, like. And then they color like, and they keep going, L-I-K-E like, and then they would color and keep going. Now, if my kids are really good at identifying, I can move them on to the next one. The next one is when they write in their sight word. So this book focuses on like, and this book over here focuses on the sight word do. So they would go through on each page, and they would write the sight word do instead of just identify it. So it ups it just a little bit. In this reader right here, 
they would just read everything. But in this reader right here, they would have to try to sound out the word rabbit and go rab -b it rab it rabbit. And no, my kids cannot all spell those on their own, but it's one of those things that they work with a teacher with and works really well. So that's just a good way to do it. And just keeping identifying them helps. Now, what do you do if you have paper rations or you cannot make printables for your kids all the time? They have highlighting tape you can use, um, so that would be a great thing to do. They also have like kind of like transparency material, but they're um, but they look like little wands, and you can put those over words to identify them, and that helps too. All right, let's move on to some fun activities. Because guys, let's face it, if your kids are just looking at a word and not saying it out loud, they are not learning that sight word. They're learning what that word looks like. Visual discrimination is not sight word knowledge. So here are some fun activities. And I tried to think of things you already have in your classroom because I tried to think of the things I would already have in my classroom. So I have these letter beads that I love because fine motor skills 101 we have to get it in there. So what I did was is I took a post-it note here because this was pre-ESGI days. Now, if you have ESGI, they'll print you off flashcards, and you could easily stick those little flashcards they already make you in here. So please know I'm totally doing that. And then I took pipe cleaners and put them in the little pockets behind. And I have my higher kids build these for me. So I do them once a month. And they would see this word zero that I already put in there, and they would go through my letter beads and put all the letters I'd need for that word in there. This picture is slightly deceiving, but can you see the orange pipe cleaners here? And then can you see the red pipe cleaners here? So that's a different differentiation. I have a bunch of different rows, and I do it all the way across, the rows of pipe cleaners with different words. So my kids could go over there and they could say, all right, I'm going to do the orange today. And they would say, like, L-I-K-E, like. If they don't know that's the word like, they pull this little paper out and they go ask somebody. They come back. They cannot just make it on their own. So they would make like. Then they would take this pipe cleaner and string these letter beads across it to make the word like. I know you guys might think this would take them 30 seconds. Guys, we're talking about minutes here because they got to put the L on. Then they got to put the I on. Then the K. Then the E. If this is a word that they're really struggling with, I will let them take this, twist it around their wrist, and make a little sight word bracelet that they can wear the rest of the day. Then, at the end of the day, they can put it back in there. Now, if this is like a center that's open for everybody else, they would have to wait to the end of center time to keep it, but just to give you an idea. Um, they love this. They think this is so much fun. Use the same idea if you have a kid that cannot learn how to spell their name. They can have their name on their wrist on a little letter B bracelet. It works great. So much fun for my kids. Now, at the end of the month, when I change them out, because remember, I throw after row of these, I take one of my low babies, who I'm still really hitting that letter identification and sound with, and I let them decompose this pocket chart. So they would take these letters out, and they would put them back in the bin. And they'd probably say the alphabet and find where the letter F goes and drop it in. So we got to work smarter instead of harder. It's a very, really, really fun game. Another thing a lot of us have are magnets. Um, I love these. And these are my favorite ones because they have vowels and consonants, and I love that. So I give my kids their words, and then I allow them to make these words. Now, once the first set of kids makes it, we usually close this bin, and then we just scramble these up. They don't have to do it. That's just what they typically do. I leave this attached to my class list right here. I just covered it up for student confidentiality. And when they make and read these words to me, I just cross them right off and move on. My kids got really good at this, like more than a little good at this. So I, of course, being the teacher, had to up the game. So I gave my kids sight words on both sides, and I let them race each other to see who could make and read their sight words first. Now remember, if they don't know one of these sight words, they can ask. That's not cheating. That's being smart. That's just a really fun way. And listen, if you let them race each other, it gets real. 
So another teacher asked me, they said, well, Mary, what do you do if you're busy or you're in reading groups or something and you can't tell them that sight word? Guys, I'm with you. It, it, it's hard. We know it's hard. My class is packed full. I have special ed inclusion. I teach the same kids you do. What do you do? So I, being the techie, created this pack of QR sight word cards. So when you scan this code right here, you hear an audio file reading this word for you. Down. I go downstairs. So they scan this and they read it. So if my kids don't know what the word is, I literally leave this book out for them and they can go scan it. Now I have it made a few different ways. This one is already pre-made and there's another one where they can build it themselves. So in the past I've had students that have um, difficulty with one or two words like here and where. I can give them both of them and they can carry them around or I can have them put their own book. This is just a huge time saver, especially if you're focusing on a few words at a time. Um, another teacher told me that she got this and then she made a word wall that's down on the kids level using all of these cards on the word wall so they can scan and listen to it as needed. So if you have a short number of words that you're focusing on, like maybe 50 or 60, that's completely doable. All right, let's move on to ways to write. Now, remember a long time ago when you were in college and they were telling you about teaching practices and they said, you really know if a kid can read words, if he, can, he or she can write words. Well, guys, you know it's true. A lot of kids can identify sight words, especially my higher kids. They can identify tons of sight words, but can they write them? Do they remember? how to spell them to write them. So if you have a higher kids who just master those sight word lists, start making them learn how to spell them. It's just really smart and it's really what they're going to have to do later on in life anyway. But let's make this developmentally appropriate, right? Let's bring the fun in kindergarten. My kids are not going to drill and kill all day. So this is a gel bag. I have all the directions for you ready to go, so don't worry. But I put hair gel in the little baggie and it's squishy and mushy, not super thick so it's going to pop. And my kids can trace sight words with that gel bag. We're going to be focusing on building that muscle memory, focusing on saying the letters to build the words. And let's face it, this is fun. I can give them a piece of paper and a pencil. I can give them a gel bag. Guys are going to pick a gel bag every day of the week. So this is how I made it. I have a link to this. Don't worry. And it's actually... Um, on my blog right now. I did a blog post and I published it last night for you guys and it is full of sensory approaches to sight words. But I took a regular baggie. I really like the freezer ones because they're a little bit more durable and usually have a double close, closure on it. I took dollar store hair gel and food coloring and I made colored baggies. Um, all the directions I will give them to you do not worry. Very easy, very cheap. I recommend this over paint any day of the week. I have it on my blog post exactly why to. It will make complete sense. Another really fun idea is pull and peel licorice. This is not typical licorice. If you can see the picture right here, your students are going to pull this apart. It's going to be much thinner and they're going to be able to mani manipulate it really easily. You can give kids a pen and pencil all you want, but man, you give them some pull and peel licorice, it just got real. They know they're going to eat it. They know they're going to love it. And let's face it, guys, if you ask your parents at home for batteries and pool and peel licorice, you tell me right now which of those two items you're going to get the next day. I guarantee you they would spend more money on pool and peel licorice just because it sounds fun to them. This is definitely a favorite. And my whole team of five teachers can use this one big bag at one time. You don't need a lot of this at all. So don't think that this is going to be a very expensive activity. It's very, very cheap. So this is the first week of school. We do the letter L, or we did a long, long time ago. And so we did licorice the first day of school, the first week of school, and my kids formed their sight words using that licorice. Very fun. Now off on a tangent, if you ever have to use composing shapes, Pool and peel licorice is great because they really have to make all the sides of the square the exact same and they can see how many sides and how many vertices they have. So just side note, it's a lot of fun. 
Um, another blessing that a lot of teachers have is windows in their classroom. Now, secret, I have no windows in my classroom. I have no sink in my classroom. Um, so I'm a little bit on the struggle bus this year. I'm in a new room. I don't have those things, but I used to. Um, so I had to take a picture with my daughter at home. But if you have a window, you can write your sight words on the back side of the window, like go outside and write them on the back side. If you can't write them backwards, you can put up a piece of paper and tape it to the other side of the window. Then your students can go to the front side and they can take Expo markers or they even make Expo window markers and they can practice writing their sight words over and over and over again. So I wrote the sight words my daughter was working on on the back side and she was writing them again on the front side. She'd write them down, she'd write them again, she'd write them down. I know some teachers have those clear easels in their classroom that they use because they clean up really well. Again, this is perfect, same idea. Tape some sight words to the back side of that, give them an Expo marker, and let them write, 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 write. Another idea I love is this. This is Frog Street Smart Start Paper. I love it. I write my sight words on it. I laminate it and then my kids can write on top of it with an Expo marker. I only use a few sheets every week, so that pack of Frog Street paper lasts me forever. Now my first few years teaching, I used a yellow marker, and I thought that was brilliant. But then I noticed, look right here on this word little, that my kids couldn't always see where to go across on, or maybe where to dot, or different things like that. So now I use an orange marker instead, and it's just a little bit darker. It helps a lot. So if that's a good tip for you. And I purposely leave this slide on there because I want you to see my boo-boo so you can learn from my mistake. Really fun. Again, they're just not writing the word come. They're saying C-O-M-E, come. C-O-M-E, come. If they don't know it, they ask. All right, throwback to childhood. I hope you guys know what an aqua doodle is. If you don't, I have a blog post right now that has a link to it for you so you can see it. But an aqua doodle is a really big mat and it has two layers. It has a bottom layer that has some colors. Can you see the green up here and the blue here and the red here and the purple here? And then it has this second layer that kind of looks white all the way around here. Well, an aqua doodle only needs water. So this is a toy that my kids got when they were two, and I just recycled it in my classroom. So you take water, and you draw a picture, or you write something on this top white layer, and you can see it through to the bottom. So much fun for kids. One of these mats can allow four kids to write on it in those colored spots at one time. It dries, so there's no cleanup. If they spill something, it doesn't really matter. You can keep going. Here's a great teaching tip. I do not have time in my day to open up all these pens and to put water in it as needed. So I put a little Solo-ish cup, like those little plastic cups, half filled with water on this table and my kids can dip their Aqua Doodle pen in it and write. If you can get an Aqua Doodle at like a consignment sale or ask around your school if anybody has a younger kid that doesn't use it anymore, you can use a Q-tip to write on it too, or you can even use like a brand new watercolor um, brush. So it does not have to be an aqua doodle pen. You can get really cheap with this and use what you have. I say brand new because if it's not cleaned really well, you're going to um, spread some colors and don't want to do that. Anyway, great idea guys. My kids think this is like heaven and earth, and I was like, guys, you played with this when you were a baby. But they love it. I actually keep two of these in my room. So we write on it, and if it gets really wet and full, then I put it over to dry, and I put down another one. Again, this is called an aqua doodle. Aqua doodle. Another thing that a lot of us teachers are doing, especially if you're trained in Orton-Gillingham, is we're using sand trays. I love them, but I don't like the mess all the time. So I use that same idea from that frog tree paper that I love, the blue sky, the green grass, and the picket fence. And I drew on those really good Thanksgiving china plates. I got one expensive pack of those plates eight years ago. And I took a Sharpie and I drew on all of these. 
yes, that took a long time. If you were a really awesome parent volunteer, train them. Um, I also have directions for how I got the line like this on my blog, so you can go read all about that. Um, and I have the link on there now for the sensory uh, phonics ideas. I found this colored sand, and again, my blog shows you exactly how I got that. I put some colored sand in there. I could have used plain sand. I just thought colors would make it more exciting. I bought one bag years ago, and I've never had to buy or make this ever again. Um, so then when we write our, le our letters, we write them in the sand, we shake it, we also form our sight words in the sand, we shake it and reset it. And guys, this is another one, another time that Taylor Swift comes in handy. I keep it on my cell phone, and when I play Taylor Swift Shake It Off, we shake our sand trays to reset them. This is a ton of fun for your kids. You will love it, they will love it. And we really try to get them to start those lowercase letters at that red line. That's what that's for. Again, sand trays, just another sensory experience. All right, so my big idea. This is what you guys are going to get for free. So don't worry, everybody's going to get this. I want you guys to um, prep this, play this game with your kids, see which ones they like and don't like. But my big idea is sight word stations. A long time ago, I realized that I was working really, really, really hard with math small groups and reading small groups. And I was doing all this, this small group work, and I was using flashcards for sight words. I was like, all right, guys, I've got to do something different. I just don't feel like I'm doing my full potential on this. What can I do? And then it occurred to me, if I got down and dirty with sight words from time to time, I think my kids would do more. I think they would do better. I think they would grow faster. And I think they would have more fun. So I dedicated 10 minutes a day to just focusing on sight words. Let me show you the activities we did. These, I call them sight word puzzles. And I showed you, we only have these two words that are uh, one letter words. All the other ones are two. But you can just see how I broke up the cards, cut them up. And I call this a table tent just because it's a piece of paper folded in half and it sits up on the table. I leave that there as a prompt to help them form those words. Again, my kids would go R-E-D, red. R-E-D, red. C-A-N. Miss Amundsen, what is C-A-N? What is that word? That's can. And this is not a quiet time of my day, guys. This is actually a very loud part of my day. Another activity we do is the secret code words. So I don't have a great shot down here, but there's a code breaker at the bottom, and they would associate this number with a letter, and they would break the code to make, um, to make the sight word. Why is this a big deal? Think about your roster of students now, and think about that one kid that struggles in ELA, but is super strong in math. Sometimes those math brains need to see the connection in letters. And if you let them do these secret code words, they see that connection in a way that their brains like a little bit more, and it kind of strengthens that bond. And then sometimes they can see it. This also really helps with rhyming words. So if you have those really good math brains, they can't see that L-O-G and D-O-G rhyme. This, this is a huge help. Um, again, I'm a techie, so you scan this code, the answer pops up so they can self-check. Listening stations. The number one thing we have to teach kindergarten kids not to read, although I feel like we do sometimes, it is to follow directions. I mean, it's huge. So there are listening activities to go with these sight words. So they read these sentences and they follow along. Again, this is a listening activity, and it's already prepped and ready for you. They go through and they read all these. They color the word red, red. The directions lead them through it. They find the word C. They color the word C. Keep going like that. These are really quick and simple for us, but they really require our kids to listen and follow directions. Huge. Another game we play is memory. I love memory because it's easy prep. They love memory because they feel like they're winning. And we all love memory because it's really good reinforcement over and over and over again of sight words. So here is memory, and they would have to find go and go. My kids do not get the match if they cannot say the word. 
and they'll call each other out. They'll be like, you did not say that sight word. And then the other kid will be like, it's go, it's go, I got it. If this is too hard for your kids or you need a differentiated activity, put them in two rows so a kid would be sitting here, a kid would be sitting here, and let them use the fly swatters. You give them the word, find C, and see who can swat it first or if they can both identify it. Another thing we do is sentence scrambles. This is a lot of fun. I carry this over into center time by putting these up on the pocket chart and really teaching how to build those sentences with sight words. Remember I told you guys we did that at the beginning of the year. We really wanted to get them to build those sight words. Then I give them a little sentence scramble using the same sentence right here where they would glue it, write it, draw it. Now teachers say, Mary, why didn't you scramble those sentences up at the bottom? Well, be before they start, I want my kids to read that sentence. I want them to say, I can go see a ball. Then when they cut it up, they're going to scramble it anyway. I've had very few students cut this whole strip up and glue it right here. They usually love cutting. You know, they cut everything. So they'll cut it into pieces and put it back together. But I want them to get that, re um, that reading support from the beginning. Another thing that is a huge hit is watercolors. Water paints are a huge deal. Everybody loves them. I love them. You love them. Kids love them. If you have administration that does not want to see watercolors in your room, watercolor some sight words and see what they think of that. My principal thought it was brilliant, and my kids run to this center, and they think it's awesome. Um, if you have kids with grip problems, use a Sharpie and draw a line over here where you want their fingers to pinch and kind of go lower to help them with it. You can have them color vowels one color, consonants another color. It doesn't really matter. This is a lot of fun. Next teaching tip. You know those parents who don't send you in the Crayola watercolors and they're following your supply list and they send you in the not Crayola watercolors and those watercolors don't last. When you first start watercoloring sight words, use all those kits first because your kids are going to trash your paints anyway. And then when they learn how to take care of their watercolors, you can pull out the good ones that actually last. It works every time. Another activity my kids do is they roll the sight word. And I have these pocket chart dice. Um, they're called learning cubes. I can link to it if you need a link. They're my ultimate favorite because each one of these, can you see the seam right here? You can slip the little um, card in there. You can change out for whatever you need. So my kids have to roll the sight word, say the sight word, write the sight word. The next kid gets the die, rolls the sight words, writes the sight words, say the sight words over and over and over again. When they fill up one all the way to the top, the game is over. They love it. And they'll pick a sight word that they want to win, and they'll all be cheering for it. So one kid might pick red, one kid might be C, pick C, one pick, kid might pick go. It's just a lot of fun for them. One game that I really like is to set up these clear cups, and I've had these cups forever on the same exact cups. You can take those same ESGI flashcard pieces or just a piece of paper, put them in the cups, and label some fun popsicle sticks. If you make them colorful, it just makes the game better. And they have to say and sort the words. Yes, they have to say it. Why do I do it this way? Because the next week, I can pull these words out and these popsicle sticks out, put them in a snack size baggie or even a sandwich size baggie, put it flat in my filing cabinet and reuse these cups over and over again. Guys, I can't store the cups, but I can store the popsicle sticks. This is a really fun one. If you're in preschool and you don't think your kids could thread um, the little pipe cleaners and beads, but you still want them to be doing similar activities, you can make it just like this. This would be a lot of fun for them. So when I prep my sight word stations, I put them in my color baggies, I'm sorry, my colored baskets. I color code everything. I have a class list here, 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 here. They're all laminated with V2V markers because I'm crazy. I put the activity in each of the baskets and I put it on my colored tables. As my kids complete the activity, they can cross their name off or you can cross it off however you want to um, share that love. And they go. I have everything they need in there ready to go. You can see the, this was for my classroom and I did have a sink. And I would keep cups with a Sharpie line on the outside of how far they could fill those cups up. If that tip helps you, I'm glad. 
So my kids this week would have six different ways that they could learn their sight words and really work on their sight words. All right, how do you assess? How do you know what you're doing is working? Because let's face it, kindergarten should be subtitled, we assess every day. Let's make this more fun for our kids. So this is an assessment basket I use. Honestly, this was pre-ESGI. This is what I had to do before I had the program. But I would keep my sight word list in here with lots of colorful markers, flashcards, and stickers. As my kids would learn their sight words, I would take a different color marker each time, check the word they got right. I'm going to show you a picture of it in just a second. And write how many words they got. Again, this was a fry list, but we do 220 adults before we get here. Let me show you what this would look like. So on 11-16, this student knew 26. When I assessed them again, they learned six more. So on 12-6, they knew 32. Guys, this right here is called data. That's exactly what this is. So all the color coding just helps me know where they got, which ones they did which. And the books are messy. They're not clean. I didn't make this book. This was the one everybody in my um, school used. And we would go through over and over and over and over again. Um, we try to assess our kids, you can kind of see, um, once every two weeks would be ideal. So I use the SGI, obviously, because I love it. Um, but at the beginning of the year, I assessed my kids on sight words, and you can see how many of them knew. I had a few strong readers who just got it easy. I had a lot that did not. This is literally my assessment data from today using sight word stations. I have 24 kids in my room from all gamuts of life, special ed collab, and you can see our progress on our sight words. Now remember if they get some of the, this means like one student probably doesn't know one of the words. So just to give you a perspective, this is how well my kids are doing on sight words because I made it hands-on, because I made it meaningful, because I made it fun, because I made it repetitious because they have to say the word as they make the word. They are not perfect, but we are definitely making progress. Now, when my kids get all of their words correct, you can see we do a 220 right here, we celebrate. So how do we celebrate? So this student got all of his lists, he got all of his words done, and um, some people ask me, Mary, why do you have a B there? Because one year I had kids who were memorizing the order in which I was giving them the sight words, and I was like, uh-uh. So I made a list A to send home, and I made a list B to check off in the classroom. Parents did not like that, but I did. So that made sure they knew those words. But anyway, I digress. So when they get all their sight words, I send this student up to our office, and the whole office staff makes a huge fuss about it. He's allowed to pick one friend to go with him. And I try to be encouraging to say, hey, so-and-so is really close, or I try to pick a friend that maybe needs that pick-me-up with sight word, and they go with him, and they get to see him, this child be bubbled. That's what they call it. They put on a bubble machine that just blows bubbles out, and they just celebrate the child. It's just a good way to make going to the office fun. We also celebrate with sight board celebrations. So I track my kids' progress, see how they're growing, and I give them all an individual goal. So I might say, at the end of February, we're going to have a popcorn party. Everybody in the class can come if, and then every student has like their own goal, and they don't know each other's goals, that's private. So maybe I would say, Riley has to know 100 words, but I know she's already at 80, and I know she's learning five every week, so she can easily reach 100. So, and then maybe Susie needs to know 50. But she's already at 40, and I know she learns about two or three a week. So I'm trying to make it tangible for each student, personalized for each student. And really, this is my excuse to celebrate with them. This is my excuse to have fun with them. Um, I've never had a child that was not invited to come to my sight word party in all of my years teaching. Because all of their goals were data driven. All of their goals were tangible. And there was so much encouragement behind it. This is not learn it at home. This is, let's get this done, guys. I can't wait to have this celebration with you. So a lot of people ask how I teach sight words. So I have a whole bunch of links to show you how I teach them, how you can start using them. 
to see what it looks like in action. And even for those first grade teachers in here, how do you do this with fry words? Because what happened was my daughter used all my sight word stations when she was in kindergarten. And last year when she went to first grade, she said, Mama, we're doing 10 words a week in first grade. I need help. And I was like, what do you want to do? She goes, I want to do that stuff that I did last year. So yes, I made fry words for her and my first grade team so they could use um, sight word stations as well. All right, guys, here is how you get the link to all of these websites, all of these downloads, everything you need. You have to type in this, uh oh, I'm going to push it back, this exact code right here, S-K-M-A-K-E-S-I-G-H-T-W-O-R-D-S. -E and it's going to give you this exact handout right here with every single link that you need. This is going to show you where those snap cards are and the apps, the Elvis game with all the details of how I create it, the free way to grab Alligator Chomp, no, nothing required, you can just grab it, it's yours, a link to the sight word readers that were differentiated, my QR scan and learn sight word books, how to make the sand trays for sensory phonics, how I teach sight words, how I start sight word stations, um, sight word stations and actions, and fry words. So all of these are on there for you. Um, I did just release a new post today, well yesterday really, it was really late last night, all about sensory experiences. So how you can use sensory, um, how you can write using sensory experiences to get those sight words. Lots of links consignment sale shopping, garage um, sale shopping. Do not buy any of that stuff firsthand if you can beg, borrow, and steal for it. And the big thing, everybody is going to get a set of sight word stations. You get 14 different activities to choose from um, to help your kids learn the sight words. So that is my gift to you as a huge thank you and just um, a way to show my appreciation for everything you do for me. Um, I hope this has been fun. I hope this has been meaningful. I hope you got a lot out of this. And I really hope that you guys can go make sight words seriously fun. Stay on the line. Um, they're going to do some giveaways in just a minute, guys. Thank you so much, Mary. You're getting so many positive comments about people saying how much they loved all the ideas. And so we just want to say a big thank you to you, Mary, for taking the time today to show us all this great information, and thank you so much for the free giveaways that you're giving out to everyone who attended live. Now, don't forget, uh, we are going to draw for five free years of ESGI. However, everyone can sign up for a free 60-day trial. If you would like to try ESGI, as Mary mentioned, you can sign up for a free 60-day trial. Please use promo code SHARING. K. Sharing K will get you $40 off your first paid year of ESGI. So when you're done with your trial and you'd like to purchase, Sharing K promo code will give you that $40 off. All right, so now for our winners, thank you so much for all of your attention. You will be getting an email from us with your instructions on how to redeem your free year. These are our winners. Jonathan Compass. Jonathan Compass, Linda Corbin, Linda Corbin, Elizabeth Huff, Elizabeth Huff, Maria Gendron or Gendron, Maria Gendron, and Heather Sniffin. Heather Sniffin. So if you are here, you might want to just give us a little shout out, but we will be emailing you. Um, to redeem your free year. Again, thank you, Mary, and everyone check your email for the certificate of participation and the link to this recording. Mary will also be giving you the 63-page unit sight word stations attached to the email. Thank you all for your great attention and have a great night.